Welcome back to the channel, my name is Zaki, and today we are going to review a smartphone case that claims to increase your smartphone's performance and battery life by wicking away excess heat through its proprietary thermophene layer. Yes, today we are reviewing the Razer Arctec Pro smartphone case. This particular one is for the iPhone X, however they do come in various configurations to fit various phones. We're going to answer several questions in today's review. First of which, does the thermophene layer actually cool your phone as they claim? Secondly, does the resulting cooling really provide a noticeable bump in performance or is it negligible? And third, is it a good protective case? Because it is a case after all, you need to know whether it's going to protect your phone if you drop it. So stick around to find out. But first, I think the lighting is a little bit too dramatic for a phone case review, right? So, hey computer. Turn Kevin Bacon on. <laughs> Much better. Yeah, Kevin Bacon is the name of my side light over there. Hey, Kevin. All right, let's jump right into it. As we go through this review, you might notice that I have some messed up knuckles and wrist over here. Uh, that was because I was butt boarding and I forgot about the physics of butt boarding. And I sat towards the back of the board instead of the front, which made me not able to steer the board. And then I got speed wobbles going down a hill and then I fell off the board. It was quite sad. But uh, don't worry, I don't have any disease or anything. I don't have open sores or anything. These are just road rash wounds. The, the pavement tore me up. So I'm healing just fine and hopefully all will be nice and completely healed within the next week or so. Um, but there goes my dream of being a hand model. Oh well. Anyways. This is the Arctec Pro by Razer. Yes, Razer, the gaming and computer company. They made a series of smartphone cases that claim to cool your phone passively through the thermophene layer which is built into the case. It's in between the case and the actual smartphone itself once you apply it. So this is the box, it's fairly clean. It's got a window showing the product in here and you just pull it, pull it right out. No frills, no extra anything. And just pop it right off. All right, so this is the actual case. You can see right here, it's a simple design. You just put the phone in it. It's a one piece case, it's not complicated at all. On the inside of the green version at least, you get this beautiful green mat on the inside. And it's it's nice to look at, but I mean, it's on the inside of the case, so you're never gonna see it once you put the phone on. In the other colored versions, they're a little bit more muted and less entertaining to look at. And on the back of the black case, you have this beautiful lime pill accent around the camera, which I kind of like because when you're taking pictures of people with your smartphone, it's very easy to locate the camera and to look at it with this green accent. So super neat touch. Again, the other colors are a little bit more muted, so you don't really have this nice popping effect. But that's just kind of the aesthetics. Nobody is here for the aesthetics of this case. We are here because we want to know whether this green mat here, the thermophene layer, which again comes in different colors, does it actually cool your phone? Well, to find out, we are going to use a laser thermometer and we are going to shoot the back of the phone while it is running benchmarks, first without the thermophene case and then secondly with the thermophene case. And then we're going to measure not only the temperature but also compare the benchmark performance scores and see if it does indeed do better with the thermophene Arctec Pro case on. Alright, so let's get started with the experiment here. All right, so for our test, we're going to be utilizing an iPhone 10. First test we're gonna do naked, and the second test we're going to apply the Razer Arctec Pro Thermophene case to see if it really does improve the cooling and increase the performance. For both tests, we're going to have the iPhone connected to a power supply to make sure that the battery level is consistent. 
So right now it is charged to 100% as you can see. It's been 100% for the past couple hours. That way it's not drawing any energy to try and get it to 100% or anything like that. It's been 100%. It's only trying to sustain 100%. So the battery should not affect performance or temperature in any way that is noticeable. Another thing is we want to make sure external communications is off. That way incoming or outgoing data will not affect the performance or temperature. So everything is off and is on airplane mode now. All right, with that, let's test the temperature on the back of the phone with the thermometer gun. Pew! All right, so right now you can see the temperature is 81.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Let me write that down. 81.6 or 27.6 Celsius. Okay, so that is the temperature of the dormant phone hasn't been used in a couple of hours uh, and we are right now going to turn it on i mean unlock it and run the benchmark so it is going to be 3d mark slingshot as the benchmark we're going to make sure no other apps are running to ensure consistent and fair test okay now we hit run and we watch it go All right, so right now we can see the results. It has finished the first round of tests. Uh, the recorded result is 2707. Let me write that down. 2707 is the score. And let's quickly test the temperature on the back now. Laser dot. And as you can see, there was a significant increase in temperature. It is now 91.5 degrees. 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit or 33.1 Celsius. All right, so now we're going to let it return to the base temperature of 81.6 Fahrenheit before we conduct the second round of tests with the case. But um, let's take a look at these benchmark numbers again. So we got 2707 as the score with the naked iPhone, no thermophene layer. And you can see the performance here. All right, so we'll see if there's any difference with the case applied to it. But first, we need to wait for it to return to base temperature. All right, so now we are back to 81.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is 27.6 Celsius. Again, it has returned to base temperature, which is good. So now we can conduct second round of tests. Let me just record the temperature again. 1.6 slash 27.6 all right but first we need to put on the thermophene layer case and we have to actually briefly unplug this don't worry it's still a hundred percent battery so it should not affect yeah i know siri you're not available i turned off everything all right so let's just simply put it in and squeeze it in and now it's it's in the case okay so we'll plug it back in once again, 100% charge, so no impact there, should be. This again is the only app running and everything is off here, so consistency is key here. So we want to go ahead and run Slingshot Extreme. We'll run it again. Let's make sure. All right, so here are the test results. So it looks like we have a score of 2791, 2791, which is significantly better. I mean, not significant, it's, it's better. It's better than the naked phone will do by itself. So let's quickly pop the case off to test the temperature underneath. Okay, now the case is off. Let's shoot it with the temperature gun. And it looks like we have 90.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 90.8 or 32.7 Celsius. So it is 
a little bit less than the naked phone would get and the score is better all right so it looks like initial testing shows that with the thermophene layer inside this case it does in fact lower the temperature by a little bit and increases performance by a little bit as well all right but that was just a preliminary test and that was only one round for without and one round with the case to ensure consistent results, I think it is important that we run the test several times without the case and several times with the case to compare the scores. But preliminary tests do look promising. And I do notice that when I have it inside the Thermophene case and I put it in my wireless charger on my car dashboard and when I'm driving and I have my Maps app and a podcast app, it doesn't freeze up as often as when it's just a naked phone or if it's in a different case, it tends to freeze up more. However, this case does not stop all the heating problems. It only mitigates it by a little bit. So let's do more rounds of testing to see how it holds up. We're going to do three tests with the case and three tests without the case. And let's compare the numbers. Alright, so now we're done with the main body of testing, and as you recall, the first two tests that we did, we measured the back of the phone's temperature before and after the benchmark, and also with and without the Thermophene case on, to see if there was a difference in the benchmark score, as well as the ending temperature after running the benchmark. So there we saw that regarding the back temperature and the performance, the phone did a little bit better with the case on. Here are the results for that test. So there you can clearly see that with the case, the phone performed a little bit better and ended with a slightly lower ending temperature despite starting with the exact same temperature. But to make sure this wasn't just a one-time fluke, I wanted to run the test consecutively three times in a row with the case and three times in a row without the case. But to make things less of a pain in the butt, I measured the temperature for this second round of tests from the front of the phone, so on the touchscreen instead of on the back. This resulted in a lower starting temperature for the first test, but the temperature continues to go up with each consecutive test. So here are the results for that one. I measured it from the front of the phone just so I didn't have to take it in and out of the case for each consecutive test because that would waste some time and maybe the temperature would fluctuate in between. I just wanted it to be in a row, like consecutive, fire, fire, fire. All right, so here are the test results from that second round of testing. On the naked iPhone for the consecutive three tests, the starting temperature was 79.7 degrees Fahrenheit or 26.5 degrees Celsius. So after running the first benchmark, we ended with a temperature of 92.3 degrees Fahrenheit or 33.1 degrees Celsius. And the first benchmark score for that was 2697. The second benchmark for the naked phone, we started at 92.3 degrees Fahrenheit and ended with 94.7 degrees Fahrenheit. And the score was 25 65 so a noticeable decrease there and then the third and final consecutive test for the naked iphone started at 94.7 degrees fahrenheit and ended at 96.6 fahrenheit with a score of 2391 so you can see with each consecutive test we are losing a significant amount of performance and the phone is heating up all right, so now what does it look like with the Thermophene layer? Here are the results. So again, with the same starting temperature measured from the front this time of 79.7 Fahrenheit, the first benchmark we ran with the case on ended with 87.6 degrees Fahrenheit from the front of the screen and a benchmark score of 27.39. The second consecutive benchmark ended at 91 degrees Fahrenheit with a score of 2694 and then the third and final consecutive benchmark with the case on ended with 94.1 degrees Fahrenheit and a score of 2497. So you can see a similar trend there with each consecutive benchmark 
we're losing significant performance as expected because it's getting hotter. The temperature is also rising. But when you compare the results without the case, you can clearly see the thermophene layer doing its job. Not only do we have higher benchmark scores with each consecutive test as compared to the naked phone, but we also have significantly lower ending temperatures despite having the same initial starting temperature. So that's very encouraging to see that this is not a gimmick, it's a legitimate thing. And um, yeah, I think that concludes the thermophene layer test. Uh, of course, if you get this, you should test it yourself and see if you have any noticeable effects. I've noticed that my phone hangs up less when it's overheating. It overheats less, but it still happens. I mean, it's not going to completely stop overheating from happening, but it will delay the time that it takes to overheat. So before we get into the actual case and protection capabilities of the Razer Arctic Pro, I wanted to run another benchmark just for, just for, um, just for kicks. And I'm gonna stick my iPhone in the freezer and run the same benchmark and see what the score is this time. So stick around. All right, so now we're in the freezer and we're going to do a temperature check on the back of the phone here. Okay, let's take a look here. As you can see, it is 61.6 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna go ahead and run the benchmark now. So open. And then we hit slingshot extreme and then we hit the run. Okay. Let's see what happens when I close the freezer. And we'll just wait and see what happens there. Alright, so I think the benchmark's over now. Let's let's see. Let's first flip it over to get the temperature. Slingshot extreme 2.2. Slingshot. I don't know why it's reading it. Okay, so it's 60.8 degrees Fahrenheit. It got cooler. I mean, obviously, because we left it in the freezer. But the, let's look at the score. Look at that ridiculous score. Now that's performance. That is crazy. Let's plug it in and compare it with the rest of the results. All right, so we're back from the freezer test and the results are quite awesome. Uh, we started with a base temperature on the back of the phone of 61.6 Fahrenheit and we ended it cooler at 60.8 Fahrenheit after the benchmark because I guess it was in the freezer and it cooled it more than the benchmark heated it up which is kind of neat and the results were a staggering 36, 39 so this really goes to show that the cooler you can run your devices the greater the performance you're gonna get. But obviously we more or less know this from just conventional wisdom, but it's cool to see the results right in front of you. And especially from sticking the phone in the freezer, that's pretty neat. All right, so now that we've determined that the Razer Arctic Pro with this thermophene layer does in fact decrease your phone's running temperature and thus increases its performance, it's also safe to assume that your battery life will increase while your phone is in this case because it doesn't have to work as hard. Now, I don't really have time to test out the battery life and have a comprehensive test like I did with the benchmark scores and results, but I think it's pretty safe to assume based on the temperature and the benchmark scores. All right, so now we're moving into the final leg, the actual protection capabilities of this case. Razor says that their Arctec Pro case is certified with a drop protection of 10 feet or 3 meters. So that's that's pretty high up. And holding the case in my hands, it's sturdy. It's I'm, I have no qualms about it. It's fairly sturdy. It's barely even bending. I mean, it's it's somewhat malleable, but it's not like a soft jelly case or anything. It's if you can hear that, it's solid. It's really nice and um, it's it's kind of grippy because they have this matte finish on it. So your phone is less slippery than when it's naked, especially the iPhone because it's all glass and metal. It's like a soap bar sometimes. So this case, I've never had a grip problem while it's in this case and it's very secure in my hand. I love it. Um, it's a little bit, it adds thickness to the phone, just a little bit. So of course, a naked iPhone is like the nicest 
to look at, but this case is pretty heavy duty. Uh, it does have a little bit of a lip, so let me put this phone inside. It has enough of a lip that if you drop your phone face first, it could protect it against the flush ground, but again, if there are any rocks or pebbles or gravel or any sort of thing where the screen is, it's, it's still gonna damage your screen. I have a glass screen protector on my phone, so it raises the screen just about to the level of the lip. So I'd say the lip's thickness is about that of a glass, a tempered glass screen protector. Something to note is that the matte finish does kind of scratch fairly easily and leaves smudge marks all over the place. It's not a huge deal, but up close it can look a little bit weathered and worn. But uh, aside from that, I mean, I trust my phone in this case. I've dropped it a couple of times on hardwood. I've never dropped it on cement or anything like that, but I wouldn't really be too afraid. This seems like it would protect it from that kind of drop. So yeah, I think protection wise, it's as good as this type of case is going to be. It's not like an extreme protection case that allows you to go diving with it or anything like that. It's just the regular phone case that is specced pretty well to handle drops and it has the added performance benefits of cooling your phone, which is really neat. They have semi-tactile button covers that are very nice. They're responsive, you feel the click, but it's not as clicky as it would be without the case on, if that makes sense. It doesn't make the buttons quite mushy, but it does, it does make it less tactile. So I'd say semi-tactile. It's pretty nice. Well, they have a cutout for where the volume rocker is, so you can reach in there and flip it on or off. That's pretty standard, I guess. And what's nice is, since the case is a little bit thick, it completely elevates past the camera bump, so when you put it down on the table, there's none of that rocking anymore. So that's really neat. The last thing is the case does allow for wireless charging because there are no metal components in the case or anything like that. So it will not hinder your wireless charging, which is a huge plus because that's what I got this case for in the first place. So I could put it on my wireless charger in my car and it would help with the whole overheating issue. So all in all, it does its job, does it well, and your phone will look like this in the case. As of this review, the Razer Arctic Pro runs for $39.58 on Amazon.com. However, you can typically find it around that $40 mark, $39.99, $39.98, that kind of deal. So expect to shell out about $40 plus tax for this cooling phone case. Overall, I'm pleasantly surprised. Most of the time when these tech things come out, I always feel like it's a gimmick that doesn't really work and they're just kind of preying on people not doing their due diligence and testing it. So it's really nice to see a product that actually comes through. Would I recommend it? For $40, it's not the cheapest case, but it's certainly not the most expensive case either. You have to ask yourself, do you really need that additional cooling benefit? So for me, it was actually helpful because my phone was overheating the way that I was using it. So with this layer on, I noticed less overheating and it seems to be able to handle itself much longer before I get any of those issues that I used to get without it. However, it is not a magic bullet. Your phone can and will still overheat in the case. It's happened to me before. However, you just get a longer period of time before that happens. So, so it's really up to you and how you use your phone and whether or not you're seeing overheating issues as you are using it now. If you are, then I totally recommend picking up the Razer Arctic Pro with that Thermofine layer. It's great stuff. But if you're not really running into overheating issues, then there's really no reason to get this case. You know, it's just, it's just a case that will keep your phone running a little bit cooler. You can get much cheaper cases that are just as protective without the cooling feature. So that's my review on the Razer Arctic Pro. 
series of cases. I would say 10 out of 10, nothing wrong with these cases. The only, only slight complaint I might have is the matte finish. While it's nice to hold, it gives it this kind of soft grippy feel. It does scratch fairly easily and leave smudge marks on it, but it looks kind of cool because it's very industrial looking, I think, and the marks on it, I feel, enhances the way it looks. But that's just me. All right, so if you would like to pick yourself up a Razer Arctec Pro case, go ahead and click on the Amazon link in the description below. That's where you can find it for the current price of $39.58 as of this review, prices could change. I don't get any affiliate money or commissions from any of these things yet. I uh, haven't set that up. I'll look into that in the future. So if you would like to support my channel or you found this video helpful, it took a lot of effort to make and the testing was fairly grueling. <laughs> I had to sit through a lot, of, a lot of benchmarks here. I would really appreciate a thumbs up if this helped you out with your purchase decision. And if you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing. It really lets me know that I'm heading in the right direction and so I will make more videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to see another review that I've done recently, check out the Quip toothbrush review. It's that fancy minimalist electric toothbrush that is everywhere on Instagram and social media and whatnot. And uh, I give you the hard honest truth about it. I, I quite like it, so go check it out.